Okay, so today we're going to be doing a little bumblebee that is part of the anchor collection and we're going to be embroidering this from beginning to the end while we talk about whatever. And to do this embroidery, what you'll need is uh, the anchor uh, yarn. Uh, we've been using the stranded cotton, which it comes in six strands. And out of those six strands, we need three. three. And you need a little scissors and we have our magic little uh, fairy <laughs> scissor with us. You need a frame, an embroidery, whoops, you need an embroidery frame like this to uh, attach the canvas and stretch it out. You need a tapestry needle and um, you need something to transfer our design onto the fabric. And we use uh, carbon paper, just this blue paper. We didn't find the one you use on fabric, so... So this we, works we as well. This. Now if you, if you live in a place which has a great <laughs> store with a wonderful <laughs> selection of products, they might have something suitable, but we don't. Someone might tell us this is wrong, but this is what we found. This is what we found, and, it works. and this is what we'll use. Yeah. So. And then, of course, we have our pattern, and our pattern looks like this. And you can download this off our website, and also off the Anchor website. So after this tutorial, if you feel like embellishing all your outfits with little bumblebees, go to arnacarlos.com, take the pattern out of there, just print it out, and then transfer it with your carbon paper and then off you go. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do, so Bees take it away. all over. So let's start. So you put the carbon paper on top of your fabric. Then you place the motif on top of the carbon paper. And we use just the pen and we make the drawing over like the outline. So you kind of trace the motif, pressing the pen. Uh, Just press. And you trace it all out. So you, you, so you get the pattern more or less exactly like it is. Oops. So then you can follow these lines when you do the embroidery. Yeah. So that is the first step into achieving this embroidery to make sure to transfer it. Okay, so I'm excited if about it. If it's a bigger motif, you can also use the, the tracing wheel or what they call yeah. it, the one you use for cakes. Yeah, that's a great idea as well. This is so tiny. So. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what it will look like. <gasps> look at that. There it is. There, there, it, is. there it is. So you see, you don't need uh, anything else but this tracing paper to transfer a design onto fabric. It's really... And you put this on. And I found a big frame for the small B this time. If you have, um, like, if you work on a small piece on, on your garment, you can use a smaller one. I think yeah. we have a smaller one somewhere. Yeah, I think any, any good uh, store that sells embroidery equipment will have some really great options for you to get different kinds of frames. And we don't know where these frames are from because I think we got them in the secondhand store. Yeah. So we have like a lot of different sizes. Yeah, which is also a great place to go to look for things. And I mean, a frame is always a frame if you can get a cheap one or an expensive one, it's still a frame. So thrift stores is a good place to, to we go love to. Drift stores. We do, yeah. And also, if you do a bigger embroidery, like you can make a whole embroidery that fill the frame, you can put the, the frame on the wall. Mm -hmm. That's also possible. But this is not for the wall. This is for your garment. And now we're going to start uh, embroidering the bee. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start with the yellow, because the yellow is the first and the last thing that you embroider on the body. Um, and it's always easier to start with the yellow so that you have that part done. Then we're going to do the black uh, and finally we're going to be covering the wings with or actually outlining the wings with the uh, with blue with the blue. So um, and then when you do the, the black, you can also do the body and the split stitch. Yeah, but the first the thing is, is the, um, the satin stitch that is going to be going on the B and the, stat the satin stitch that we've talked about before is a great filler stitch that will allow you to fill a big area of a design and in this case the bumblebee has that body 
that is black and, and yellow. So, so those areas are going to be the areas that are going to be filled with the uh, satin stitch. And I think that um, the carbon paper might makes like a very, what you call it, a thick line? A thick line, but, yeah. But then as you start... It disappears after yeah. a while. Yeah, if, as you start filling the embroidery, you'll see that it will no longer be there. As soon as you wash your, what you call it, wash your garment. It yeah, disappears. it'll go away. I need one more there. It's a very cute design, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But it's hard hard to do it on camera. Mm -hmm. Because there is no room for mistakes. No. But I probably do it anyway. Yeah. And here we are, two guys trying to multitask, try to do embroidery and talk at the same time. And that can be pretty challenging as well because <laughs> we're guys and we don't usually do that, do we? No. But anyway, let's see what let's see what happens. What happens. So this is the satin stitch, satin stitch. just filling the body of the, the little bee. The body, oddy, oddy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> body, oddy, oddy. Yeah, and bees is, you know, bees is something that have inspired us for a very long time. We love little bees and um, for a Scandinavian, the summer is really a summer when flowers are growing and you, and you see the bees flying around and you hear the vibration of their wings as they buzz from flower to flower. Um, it's something that we find very charming. In winter, we don't have any insects that are uh, active. They're all sleeping. So it's really definitely part of summer for us. I try to stay on the lines that I was drawing, but if I can't stay on the lines, the, the bee will look more hairy. If the, the yellow and the black yarn is Merge. overlapping yeah. or I try not to make them overlap but you never know and I also use a very sharp needle this time so it's easier to pull it through the, the, fab the, the fabric, the yeah. fabric and yeah we designed this this bee um, because we love them we have a uh, we have always used bees as inspiration for our work and when we came to Norway or when we came to the state train station that we live in now uh, originally the there was no garden it was just a gray platform and it was when we started growing our garden and the flowers started coming that the bees moved in moved in yeah and now we have a lot of them I mean they're buzzing around and they're always so charming and a lot of different breeds yeah they are, yeah. It's amazing how many different bees there are. You have the big one and the, the big that is like a helicopter. Yeah. It's, it's coming very slow. And the, the very small ones. Yeah. We also have a greenhouse. And we have to save bees all the time yeah, because they, they fly, fly in, in yeah. and they want they can't get out so we have this this what do you call it uh auction oh yeah this uh save the bee in the greenhouse oh yeah, yeah okay so it's like a mission to <laughs> it's save a mission bees. Yeah. every now and then we have to go around with paper and try to get them on the paper and mm. carry them out from the greenhouse yeah, and then we've heard about the, the fact that the bees are dying and you know what the world would be like without any bees and how people encourage you to build these insect hotels. And we've done a, a video on that already. It was posted last year where we showed you how you could do an insect hotel. The bees are not dying in our garden because no, we no, have a lot not. of well, bees. And yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, we put the insect hotel there um, you know, when we did the tutorial, but... Uh, We've always had a lot of bees, so maybe our garden is good for them. They, it, it's got all those plants that they love mm. uh, and that they actually need to survive. But yeah, the, the insect hotel was a great idea. And it's very difficult to know whether they are using it or not, because these are tiny creatures. And the, 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 the whole point of the insect hotel is all the little nooks and crannies where they can hide. And so we don't really know, but we've been going there and we've been having a look and trying to see if there's anything there. And I think... 
I'm hoping that they do use it. I think so. So you're finishing the body now, the, the yellow part yeah. of the body, yadi, yadi. The body, yadi. I think I take another one there. Yeah. Try to make it thick. So now you're doing the contrast with the black stitch. The black stitch. And it's a really nice contrast. I like really I really like the yellow and the black together. I think that those two colors are really, really great. So nature is a really good designer, mm -hmm. considering that it's the bee's natural colors. Okay, so the bee, and the bee is not the only insect that we put in this uh, first collection that we've done for Anchor. There's a little butterfly and mm. a dragonfly as well. A dragonfly. And yeah, I mean, we love these insects. And uh, when we look at them, they really inspired us with all their stunning colors and patterns. And we always feel that nature is really a wonderful designer. And the things that you can find in nature are very, very inspirational. Mm. Especially the insects. Yeah. I'm going a little bit over the line now. It's actually quite nice because it looks like it looks more hairy. It's actually nice. I, yeah. I was thinking I shouldn't do it like that, but suddenly I just felt for. But that's the thing about embroidery um, all the different effects that you can achieve depending on how you're doing it and the fact that you can go up a little higher and make it more three-dimensional if you want uh, as you're saying when they oh, look when I go like you could even make more make them overlap lap more mm -hmm. so they look more real yeah I think that um, they jump out of the fabric and attack you. Yeah. Now I finished the body. Body, adi, adi. Hugo Swart. Yep, there's a black head and then you've got uh, French knots yeah. for the uh, eyes. Yeah, so I just fi so fill the heads. And then you should do the, uh, the And then I do the, the legs, right? Yeah, I fill the head with black and then I just make some French knots. Mm -hmm at the end yeah so anyway speaking about the techniques uh, you know you can do these different stitches the way they're supposed to do and then you can variate them to your own taste and that that will give it a personal style as well mm -hmm. which i think is really nice as you were saying oh you didn't want them to overlap but you were talking and then you did and then when you, <laughs> when you actually did it you discovered how much you actually liked it so that's actually it a good thing it means that so that's enough for the head so now i do the um, antenna antenna or is it no it's the front legs no, it's, no they've the, got antennas uh, and front legs yeah actually. so i do the antenna and that's the split stitch yeah and they are really short yeah, so same. you have to do short stitches yeah you've pretty much done all the satin stitching that you need to do i'm finished with, with the, the satin, satin stitches stitch. yes and if anybody wants to see closely how we do our satin stitches, uh, there is a video tutorial on our uh, YouTube channel, um, How to Embroider Satin Stitches by Arne and Carla. So look for that as a reference. And we've also done the split stitch before. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you need a refreshing course in how to do the split stitch, there's also a video on that. Yeah, I think that if we keep embroidering these bees on shirts and, and things, we'll probably end up being so inspired, we're going to end up going out and making new insect hotels. I think we could do mm -hmm. with a few more, don't you think? Of course. We've only got the one. We saw a very nice one in Sweden once. Oh my God, that insect That was, hotel was the stunning. best insect hotel ever. ever. It was made of what you call pulvit. What's that in English? Oh. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> it was made out of those wooden out of those wooden platform square like things. Like five of them on top of each other. And then they put rotten wood and bricks and like a lot of dry stuff from the garden. It was massive, huh? Yeah, it was so beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't an insect hotel. It was an insect mansion. Or it an was a mansion. Palace. It was a palace. Palace. The royal... Bee. Yeah, for the queen bee. The queen bee. And all her little helpers. Yeah. That was so a that's... really beautiful hotel, yeah. And we've 
put it in our mind, in our memory. And uh, we've made like a... Look at the bee, it's coming to life. Oh, there it is, yeah. I like the satin stitch. I think it's a really nice uh, three-dimensional stitch as well. It, mm. it brings it up a little bit from the, the embroidery. Yeah. It brings it up from the fabric uh, and gives it a little bit of structure, which is really, really nice. You could also, if you would, you could also outline the body of the yeah. bee with the split stitch. stitch. And then you do satin stitch over the split stitch, well, like on the outside of the split stitch split stitch because but, then it would be more kind of fat bumpy. yeah a fat b <laughs> but i think that it's a big but this is fat enough yeah and it's a small remember this is a small project and uh it might be too much if you have a really big design then yeah you can outline it first with split stitches and then you can go in and fill it with satin stitches mm -hmm. but this is a really small b and i think that Sometimes too much is just too much. Yeah, and if you make like many bees, it's really hard to make them look exactly the same. Yeah. But it shouldn't be because it's handmade, so there should be variations. Yeah. So don't freak out if you can't get to looking exactly the same. No, you always have to remember the fact that um, anything machine made will create something that is cookie cutter, that is exactly the same time after time after time where did you get that word from cookie cutter cookie cookie cut? cutter you know you know you have this thing and you cut cookies and they oh, all look the same the cookie cutter. the cookie cutter yeah <laughs> and this is this but my point is that um, handmade things should be unique so each bee should be a one of a kind and it should have its own personality and you should never despair if they don't look alike that's the whole point of a handmade piece a handmade piece is unique and an industrial piece is a cookie cutter piece. Okay, so we've changed colors and now we're working with a lighter blue. Uh, like on the inner yarn? Yarn? The inner, uh, inner part of the wing. And the outer part of the wing will have a darker, darker blue. blue. And originally we were considering if we were gonna fill the in between the two blues, if we we're gonna fill that with satin stitches in an even lighter blue. But uh, because we have uh, in the anchor project and in the styling, we decided to embroider the bees on, on a white surface, we decided that it wasn't necessary to do a satin stitch. But it's an idea. If you want to customize your own bee and make it into your own, you could add a third blue, like a very light blue, inside the wings. But we're not going to be doing this. No, I think it's enough with it's the, enough like with the just wing. outline the shape of the wing. It's a sweet little creature. It's one of the favorites of mine in the collection. Mm. I love this little, I love this little bee. It kind of comes alive. While you so it's really coming into mm. into shape. And the trick with this split stitch is that you have to come back in the center of the yarn. And when you make the curve, it's not that easy. No, curve. The curves are are, <laughs> are the big challenge in this project. I'd say turning the. So you have to come back into the yarn to make it curved. That's why I do short stitches now, because if they're too long, you can't curve them. And there's also different plants you can put in the garden, which the bees like more than others. Yeah, but that's what we were saying. I mean, we must, even, yeah? we must have the greatest, uh, the most favorite plants of the Norwegian bees, because they're always here in the summer. Mm -hmm. This year we also bought this package of seeds with a lot of different flowers that was that was meant for the bees. Yeah, the to make a like a field of flowers. Field of flowers with special treats for the bee. Yeah. And yeah, it's important to take care of our creatures, our insects. They're all here for a purpose, just like us. And um, yeah, without bees, the world would be horror if you know what I mean I know what you mean <laughs>
There will be no fruit. That's for sure. No yeah. berries. No berries, no fruit. No nothing. So yeah, make sure that Then you, you have to walk around in the garden and what do you call it? Pollinate. Pollinate stuff. Pollinate no, I'm not stuff. Gonna pollinate anything. <laughs> you have to have a little what do you call like a little broomstick? And then you go around and you touch the flowers. That sounds very unrealistic, to be honest. <laughs> I so. But I do think instead of that, which is quite a ridiculous and unrealistic no, uh, suggestion, it, 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 you well, can it is, do it. People instead of that, people, people do that. People, yeah, I know. But people could actually go and get the the insect hotels or build them themselves. Mm -hmm. That's the blue, light blue wing. So we have one more wing. No. Then you need to do two. The, oh, notes. I forgot. We have to put on the eyes. Yeah. So the question is, the question. Um, what do people think about uh, this way of doing a video <laughs> tutorial? That's the question. Do you like, do you like seeing us do the embroidery and not seeing us, and then having us talk about whatever comes into mind? Um, I think it's kind of, in a way, interesting for you guys because we do talk a, a lot about the inspiration behind a design, and you actually do get to know us a little better in terms of what we like and how things inspire us. I mean, we, you've gotten mm. loads of stories about little bees in the garden through this video tutorial. At, at the same time, you see us doing um, the stitches, the satin stitch, the split stitch, and soon the French knot. So you're learning something and you're also learning something about ourselves. So do you like this? Uh, would you like us to do a few more of these? Uh, these are questions that we'd love the answer to. So um, please feel free to put a comment. And it's good to do this like if we have a bad hair day which i have almost <laughs> every day we can do the yeah. embroidery and talk except, video except you forgot something arne we filmed a introduction uh, where you can oh, see your hair and we're also true. filming an, uh, oh, an ending to this that. tutorial where you can also see your hair so i just forgot it. yeah the, the whole bad hair Sorry. day thing kind of doesn't work Except now people are definitely going to be looking at your hair when we do the <laughs> grand finale of this tutorial. So uh, okay. you brought it upon yourself, I brought it up. my dear. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Look, yeah. the bee is now running around. Oh, wow. Isn't it lovely? It's so lovely. And this one you can actually place on the garment any way you like. You can put it, you know, it can fly up, it can fly sideways, it can be oh. pointing on on one of the sides or the other. And this is this is not the first bee that we designed. We also did bees in one of our knitwear collections once. The thing, the thing like that, years ago. Yeah, the thing that was interesting was we were so fascinated with our insects and we had the garden that we had built up from scratch and we had this situation where we went from no bees to bumblebees buzzing around all summer inspiring us. And then when we were doing, we were designing knitwear and it had all these bees on it. Um, we started also doing a lot of research at that time um, on Norwegian traditional knitting patterns. And incredibly, there is a very old traditional Norwegian pattern uh, that looks like a bee. I think we showed that in the video once. I think we did. And because there's a book. Yeah, there's that book that we love so much yeah. from uh, Anniken Siebenberg. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to, hopefully I'll remember to post it on our blog uh, together with this tutorial so you can see the traditional Norwegian knitting pattern shaped like a bee. And if I forget this, make sure to remind me in the comment field below. Uh, and I'm sure, I'm sure somebody will because everybody here is so interested in, in seeing all the stuff that, that we've got. So yeah, yeah, I'm going to post that pattern for you guys to see. And apparently, yeah, the bee is a traditional. You think Norwegian that's allowed? Maybe well. that's not allowed. To post her? To post the picture? Maybe it's, maybe someone had the rights to uh, that No, bee? I don't think so, because the book was written in the 20s, in 1920, and it's almost 100 years ago. So I would think that there is no, there is no copyright. But I'll check, oh, it I'll check it and make sure that we don't break the law, because we don't want to do that either. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that it should be okay to post that, a pa uh, that pattern online. I'm almost finished. You are, yeah. Wing number two is on its way. And yeah, I love the bee. I love the way it kind of 
comes out of the garment a little bit. It's a little bit three-dimensional. Um, it's easier to achieve that with this kind of a stitch as opposed to doing a cross stitch. And uh, I'm very, very happy that we decided to include a few items or a few embroidery designs that are not cross stitch uh, in order to show you guys a little bit more about how these stitches work, seeing it as you've already seen the tutorials that we've made previously. So that's always, that's been really nice. And this is what we showed you before. That's just a few stitches. There's, yeah, there's so, so many. many. So if you want to learn more stitches, um, that's another thing that we'd love to hear from you. Let us know. Do you want to learn how to do other stitches in embroidery? Put it in your comments below and we'll have a look at it and we'll see what we can do. If we know it. Yeah. Well, well we can learn it and then we can show it. Yeah. Isn't it, <laughs> it Pippi Longstocking that said that um, I've never done this before, so I'm sure I'm going to be really successful That's with it. That's long stocking. Or something yeah. like that. I do agree with her. I agree with her every She's day. a smart girl. That's the bee with the wing. Now we need to do the eye. So when you do the French knot, first you have to attach the yarn. And then you just make a little stitch like on the top. The yarn should be around the needle like two times should be enough for this one. And then you pull the yarn through that, the one you twisted. And you pull it like this and you go back. And luckily the bee has two eyes. So there you have a little knot. Yeah. And since the bee has two eyes, you get to show it again for uh, a second time. Just and uh, we are hoping that it To get the yarn up. Like this. I p go and I make a little stitch. This is so tiny, but it should work. Like this. And then you... Wrap your yarn, wrap the around, the yarn around the needle like One, two. two times and then you pull the yarn through the twisting. I have to hold it like that and then you get a little knot and you go down again. And there you have two French knots. That's the eye. Again. Let's show the finished uh, project. There you have it. That's a bumblebee. beautiful bumblebee to embellish, uh, for example, a blouse. And that's exactly what we've done uh, in the anchor collection. We've put these on little blouses. And I think there's an image coming right about now. And <laughs> here it is, the final result on the garment. So it's a really nice little touch. It's not a lot, but it's a cute little detail. Uh, and yeah, it's, and you it's can do perfect. them in many different colors and put them all over your blouse. Yeah, so or wherever you want them. Put a bee on it. Put a bee on it. That's what we propose. And that's it. So cool. we hope you've had, you've enjoyed uh, this little <laughs> tutorial that we've done. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed seeing the process from beginning to end. Um, it's been a lovely time spending yeah. here. Uh, always great to talk about everything, especially the inspiration. Now you know a little bit more about our relationship to insects and all the things that we love about nature. So thank you very much for watching. Thank, if you. You, thank you. If you like what you've seen, please <laughs> don't forget to subscribe to the Arn and Carlos channel and uh, tell us again what you think about this tutorial and if you want us to do more like this. And we'll be looking forward to connecting with you again uh, next week. So thank you so much for watching and see you again soon. Bye. Bye.